Welcome to the Brothers Chamber Show, Getting Saucy with Natalie. I'm Natalie, and today we're going to be making a New York staple pizza. So, first things first, I went and got some pizza dough earlier. You could always make your own pizza dough, but today I decided to be a little lazy and buy some, which you can get at any specialty market for a couple dollars or at your local pizzeria. So we've got that here. And so really all we have to do is make our sauce and then, you know, cheese it up and put some toppings. So before we make our sauce, obviously we need garlic. So we'll get our trusty rusty pilon, which is already filled with garlic, salt, and peppercorns. We're going to take it over to the couch and, and do a little crushing before we saute. And we're going to talk to our friend Donna. Donna Summer, everyone. A love trilogy. Before I start crushing, I would just like to say that this is probably one of the best albums ever made, in my humble opinion. Even if you don't like disco, it's awesome, and it's got some really wonderful under-the-radar hits, such as Could It Be Magic and Try Me, I Know We Can Make It. So if you're a Donna Summer fan, or if you just like good music, please give my girl Donna's album a listen, a love trilogy. It's incendiary. All right, so we're gonna crush up some garlic. Just get it crushed up real quickly. I'm pretty excited to make this pizza. I haven't made a, a homemade pizza in a while. And it's so fast and easy. Like if you go and buy the dough, even if you don't want to make your own sauce, you get sauce in a jar and you buy cheese and you have toppings. And in about 15 or 20 minutes, you have a pizza. It's magical. Magical. And we live in such a great city that there are so many pizzerias. You have your pick of all these different places that really know how to make a good dough. So take advantage of that, New York. It's a real jewel. Just get this nice and crushed. I might even leave it a little chunkier than usual today because I personally kind of like when I've got like a really rustic slice of pizza and it's got like chunks of garlic that are kind of like strewn around. I like that, so I'm gonna do that today. So yeah, I think this is probably good. You can see that it's still, it's still kind of chunky actually, but that's more than okay because those are just gonna taste delicious once they're all soft and coated in tomato sauce. So now we can go saute them. So I was looking up some facts on pizza, and pizza, New York style pizza, came to New York in the early 1900s. And the first pizza parlor was opened in 1905 by a guy named, and please forgive me Italians if I do not pronounce this correctly, Gerano Lombardi. So thank you very much, Mr. Lombardi, for this wonderful treat that we eat on a daily basis in New York. All right, so I turned on my pan. It's gonna heat up pretty quickly. I'm gonna add some olive oil. Don't be shy with the olive oil. Never. Swirl that around a little bit. And I've already cut up some onion, so it's ready to go. I've got my garlic crushed up, and I've got some tomato sauce. You can use tomato sauce, or you can also do crushed tomatoes. Depends on how chunky you want it. But today we're just working with like a simple you know, thin tomato sauce that we're gonna jazz up. I don't have any fresh herbs on hand to put in it. Like sometimes maybe I'd put basil or oregano or something, but unfortunately my basil and oregano plants had some issues this season, so they're no longer with us. Um, but next year, I'll have them next year. So anyways, let's saute this stuff. And okay, so first we're gonna add our onions. I'm gonna add it into this nice, Piping hot oil and get that going. Let's move this around a bit. Making tomato sauce from scratch was one of the first things that I learned to cook by myself, I would say, like from an early age, and it's still one of my favorite things to make in the entire world. Just because it's so easy and you can use such lovely fresh ingredients. I mean, right now I'm using canned tomatoes, but that's because 
it's the dead of winter at the moment and I don't love buying unripe tomatoes at the grocery store. So I like to buy fresh tomatoes during tomato season. That's just my personal preference. If you want to use fresh tomatoes, I'm sure it will be delicious just, uh, you know, the same. So now we're going to add our garlic mixture, which has already got salt in it. So we'll have to do really minimal seasoning of this, which is nice. Add that in. I'm just going to let that sweat for a little bit. And while I'm letting that sweat, I'm going to take a little sip of rum because I can. Mm. Keeps me warm during these cold Brooklyn winters. <laughs> and in the meantime, I'm going to cut up a little bit of greens, which I believe to be Swiss chard. I got this from my CSA. And it's just so beautiful. It even still has the roots attached. It's so gorgeous. It looks to me like Swiss chard, but it's so small. So maybe it's baby Swiss chard. I don't know. But in any event, it's going on my pizza. And I mean, I'm just going to give it like a really rough chop. My CSA is wonderful. They always give me greens that have already been pre-washed. So it really facilitates the cooking process. And that's all I'm going to do. Here this some more. I think we're... We're going to be ready, I think, for the tomato to add that so that it can simmer for a good bit. So I'm adding our tomato puree. And just stir that puppy up a little bit. See, and I love... I don't know, for me, I love the juxtaposition of the smooth tomato with the chunks of onion and garlic because it just keeps, keeps the pizza interesting. Actually, first, I need to saute the greens. So this is going to be the quickest saute ever because I don't like overcooked greens. Overcooked greens, it's one of my biggest pet peeves in this world. I hate overcooked greens so much. I'm definitely of the mentality that, like, I just give my greens just enough heat for them to wilt and that's it. I really like to maintain as much of as many of the enzymes and as as much of the, you know, intact freshness as possible. So, that's my spiel on <laughs> throw some garlic in here. Get that going a little bit. And I'm not even going to let that brown that much honestly because I like raw garlic. There, I said it. I love raw garlic. So I don't mind if my garlic isn't cooked through. I don't mind if I have stinky breath because I'm getting all these health benefits from the garlic and because I love the spiciness of barely cooked or raw garlic. I can't help it. I was raised that way. So again, I'm not really, I'm not going to season this more because there's already salt and pepper in the garlic. So I give it like a couple of stirs and, you know, jiggle it around a little bit. And, you know, that's good for me. I'm just going to turn off the heat because there's still going to be residual heat in the pan that's going to continue cooking it. That's one of the most important things to remember with greens is just before they get to the point where you want them to be, Turn off the turn off the stove because they keep cooking due to the fact that the you know the metal retains heat and it depends what you're cooking with. If you're cooking with cast iron, you know turn it off even sooner because cast iron retains so much heat that it'll continue cooking for another minute or two after you turn off the heat. Our tomato sauce is I don't know I think pretty much ready to go. I'm gonna leave it to keep simmering, but you know simmer it as little or as long as you like. But I prefer to just Wham bam, thank you ma'am, because I'm hungry. So we're ready to roll out our pizza dough. I'm gonna flour my board really quickly, and then we'll just get to rolling. This is one of my favorite acts, just sprinkling flour, because it's like, I don't know, you have permission to make a mess, so you're just like, la 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 la, whatever. Just throwing flour on the table, no big deal. 
I love making a mess quietly. My mom hates cooking with me because she says I'm a super messy cook, which I know I am. I'm not even going to lie, but it's kind of fun to be messy when you cook. I don't know. That's just me. So you want to coat it decently with flour so it doesn't stick too much. And I hate to disappoint you, but I'm not going to do a really cool way of like balancing it on my knuckles. I don't know how to do that, and I don't feel like cleaning up pizza dough, and I don't feel like wasting money on dough that's on the floor. So I'm going to roll it out with the rolling pin. But whenever you're making pizza, you can stretch out the dough however you would like. Pull it out, it's pretty elastic, so you'll roll it and then it's gonna shrink back and then you're gonna roll it and then it's gonna shrink back. But ultimately, I mean, and this depends on how thick or thin you want your crust. I like it to be pretty thin, but I've come to realize over the years that not everyone is adept at making a good thin crust pizza. There are lots of people who will make a thin crust pizza, but their oven isn't hot enough or whatever, so their pizza crust, like you pick it up and then the toppings just kind of slide off, like it just goes Bleh. I'm hoping that's not what we're gonna have today. So this is a little oddly shaped, but I'm gonna roll with it. We're gonna put this one on a sheet tray. It's ready to go. All right. Now it's time for dough number two. Make more mess. La la la, la la la. It's actually really easy to make pizza dough from scratch, but the main thing is if you want it to be good crust, you need to let it rise and then punch it down and let it rise again and then punch it down and then you separate it and then you let it rise again and then you roll it out. That's what I learned my first restaurant job in California because pizza was like one of our things. We had a wood burning oven. We had a station that was expressly just for pizza making. Like at any given time, we had one guy. His sole job was just to make pizza because we sold a lot. And I used to have to punch down the dough. That was part of my responsibility since I did a lot of baking there. Make the pizza dough. So that's how I know. That's what the, the pizza places do. The real serious pizza makers. It's a process, but it's worth it in the end because you get this delicious, thin, crispy, slightly yeasty crust. And it's just divine. It's just divine. All right, okay. So all these guys want now is some sauce, some cheese, and some toppings. So let's get it rolling. Just off the flame, mmm. Man, this smells so good. I'm just gonna spoon it. And now in true New York pizza fashion, I'm not gonna go heavy with the sauce. Because a true New York style pizza does not have a ton of sauce. You know, I mean, there's definitely sauce on it, but it's not a ton. It's just enough that it complements the cheese and the crust. It's like a perfect balance. So that's what we're gonna do here. Getting a facial from this <sighs> tomato sauce steam. <laughs> it's really opening up my pores. All right, so that's one pizza. Now number two. Get those nice garlic and onion chunks in there. Don't skimp on that. So when you're doing this, you wanna leave a few inches, obviously on the edge so that you have a place to grip the pizza, unless you're just one of these people that doesn't want a place to grip the pizza because you eat it with a knife and fork, which I'm not even gonna get into. And this one looks like it's nice and saucy. Now we're gonna cheese it up. I've got some mozzarella that I've already sliced up and it's just begging to be laid on this pizza. Just begging. Kind of think pizzas where it's just random cheese strewn about on red sauce. I think it's so beautiful. Like I don't even mind that every square inch isn't covered by cheese. Because if it's good quality cheese and good quality sauce, you don't have to, you know, have it spread out. 
So we're gonna lay these down lovingly to their new home. So excited about this. All right, last couple pieces of cheese. Let's make it count, huh? I think this looks, the spacing looks pretty good. Yeah, you can dig it. All right, so we got our cheese. Now toppings, so I'm gonna make one veggie pizza and one with meat. So the meat one is gonna get chorizo and it's going to get some olives. So let's scatter these slices of chorizo expertly across this pizza pie. Make it a meat lovers, we'll go a little heavy on it. Why not, right? Why not? Okay, this looks like a good amount of chorizo. Bloop. And then we'll do a little smattering of, this is some olives and red pepper and mushroom. One of those beautiful marinated mixtures that you get at the deli or at the market. All right. I think this looks pretty beautiful, in my humble opinion. So there's one, and then the next one is going to get our lovely um, Swiss shard that we sauteed. Just kind of smatter it on. Ooh, look at that contrast. Ah, so beautiful. So we got our garlicky Swiss shard. I'm going to add some more of those olives to it. And then I'm gonna finish it with some onion as well. So I'll put some on the veg and then put a little bit on the meat lovers. And these look pretty good to me. I think they're ready to go. I mean, if you want, we can also, sometimes I like to oil the crust just so that it gets nice and golden when it's in the oven. So do like a little line around the edge and then just go in and kind of smooth it with your finger. Make you have a nice, beautiful golden crust. Don't be shy with the olive oil. It's not gonna bite. All right, these guys are ready to go in the oven. So we've just taken our pizzas out of the oven and they're looking Pretty delicious, if I do say so myself. Got our veggie pizza here and our meat lovers here. And really, that's that. I mean, so get your dough, whether you buy it or you make it. Make your sauce, or you can buy it. Put your cheese, put your toppings, put it in a piping hot oven, and you got a delicious pizza in, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. Super easy start to finish. So that's another weeknight treat that you can use on nights when you're not feeling super energetic. All right, so next time we'll be making another delicious treat and I look forward to it. So this has been the Brothers Chamber Show. I'm Natalie and thanks for getting saucy with me.